this point, every other miter has been glued. And yes, they do pass the dental floss test. So that makes four out of eight are completed. You'd probably like to know the secret to making perfect miters. Wouldn't we all? The disappointing reality is there is no secret. You just have to take your time, clamp them perfectly, and wait. Patience will be rewarded. At this point, I have four angled parts to fit together, which is considerably easier than having eight parts to fit together. So effectively, I've tried to cut the problem's difficulty in half. In case you missed the last video, what I'm doing here is strengthening these parts by adding a biscuit sort of thing to the center. And in order to do this, I made a jig on the table saw, which the last video went over in more detail. It worked out pretty well. There was very little room for error, but I was still able to fit the largest possible biscuit into this space that I could. In fact, you can see in this shot with the sunlight just how close I was to the surface. One problem at a time. These parts are not done yet. They're still a few millimeters long on each side. And that way we can fit them together more perfectly later. We're always changing, adapting, accommodating new information as it comes in. Maybe that's the secret to a perfect miter. <laughs> Another secret is to remember that fear and caution are not the same thing. You have to replace all of that fear, that apprehension you have with cutting expensive materials or materials that already have t some of your time invested in them. Replace all of that apprehension with caution. The old carpenter's axiom, measure twice, cut once. Uh, that's a case of proceeding with caution, with deliberate, focused intention. And don't confuse that with advising you to be arrogant or overconfident. If you're burdened with overconfidence, you're just an imbecile. <laughs> because everything I do, no matter how I proceed, I always feel a certain level of uncertainty, and that's good. That's the tension that keeps our string tight. But it's no magical mystery tour, it's just comparing one thing to another. All angles are relative to something. So, look, this is just a, two pieces of scrap metal that are screwed together with a wing nut. I have a fancier version of that that I use as an angle finder, but it's not necessary. And look, an ideal octagonal frame would have 22 and a half degree angles everywhere, but this one does not, because it's a real world example. So, we take this, apply it to the protractor, which is just cardboard and printed paper. Make a mark, and look what we have there. It's right around 46 degrees away from zero. Mental note, half of 46 degrees is 23 degrees. Hold on to that thought for a moment. And what I have rough cut here are two angles that are each 22 and a half degrees, which add up to 45. Clearly something's wrong. I want to either add to the toe of the cut or subtract from the heel of the cut. And I want to do the same on each of these. In other words, I don't want to add a degree to this one and leave this one at 22 and a half. Instead, I would prefer to add a half of a degree to each of these. Split the difference. Back at the saw, the number will read 23 degrees instead of 22 and a half. And so caution, I stay alert, aware, mindful, paying attention to everything I can, and don't confuse that awareness with confidence. Although, in my life, I've made hundreds of perfect sets of miters, and so even if I do destroy this, I'll find a way to fix it. Knowing that gives me a little bit of comfort. Again, patience. Some of these miters might take eight cuts per side before I get them right, and that's all right. Whatever it takes. Now I have four parts. 
and I'd like to cut that number in half so that I only have two remaining miters. I'll start by joining these two, which will cause this to become a part, and I'll join these two, which will cause this to become a part. Sorry if I'm oversimplifying, but I want you to really get it deep down conceptually. Now, when I cut this, this one is already sized to fit. It fits from this point to this point perfectly where I want it. That's not too difficult. This long one, I'm going to adjust it to fit, and when I do that, if this side has been set, leaving this side a few millimeters long to fit here later, when this is set at this corner, then how I adjust this for length will affect this up here. And so this is the part that I'm paying closely, close attention to. Note that I made some plastic spacers. This is just, oh, a little over a sixteenth of an inch. It's just a piece of plastic. And it's in all of the parts. And the reason that I did this, spray glued at the finished ones. The reason that I did this is because wood and glass expand and contract at different rates. And so I want to keep a nice little buffer, if it's possible, between them. Later, I will squirt some silicone in there. At least, that's the plan. Any questions, please ask. But I'm going to be doing this off camera because I don't want to have the bother. I don't want to mess this up. Okay, so wish me luck. Next time we speak, I will only have two parts to, that remain to be joined. Six down, two to go. But it's the toughest two that remain. Why are those two the toughest? because you kind of have to have all of your cuts fit together perfectly before you do either of the glue ups. It's kind of tough to explain my methodology, but this is what I want you to take away from this. Everything is a comparison to something else. You can try to trust in measurement, but that lets a lot of error in. So it's usually safer to just compare things. For example, this piece is the same length as that piece, and the two end pieces are the same. These four corner pieces are all almost identical. Instead of thinking in terms of measurements, think in terms of length comparison, and then you'll do away with all the error that comes with using all the numbers. Another thing that I want you to take away from this is that you're trying to develop a conceptual understanding of the thing that you're making. When you're doing something like this, Yes, you can blow through it real quickly and just set your saw to 22 and a half, and chances are you'll get through it. But when it's really important and failure absolutely is not something that you can tolerate, then there's another way to do it. And that other way is by developing an ability to see through walls and around corners. You kind of want to understand the fit that you're making in a deep down sort of way. And the best way to do that is to just not hold it up to where it goes and mark it and look at it in one place, but to fit it in all sorts of different places and check against all sorts of ways in which it possibly can fit. Looking at both the largest possible fit it could have and the smallest possible, and then shooting for that sweet spot in between that you're just trying to hit the center of the bullseye of. I hope that makes some sense. I'm trying to give you some insight into what I'm thinking when I'm doing something that I have good reason to believe will turn out perfectly. What I'm trying to tell you is that I don't just rely on one method or one technique. I'm trying to use every trick in the book and I'm using these various tricks to cross check against one another so that I can look for any discrepancies when I see any red flag, any reason to believe that something's wrong, and I start the entire process over from the top. If the goal is perfect, then there's no such thing as obsessive. You want to develop a feel for where it wants to be ideally, and then when we find that place where it feels as though it's supposed to be there, we want to make a note of how that's relative to this 
point that we marked. Everything relative to something else, it's a game of comparisons. And last one. And there you have it, eight flawless spiders. That's about it for this one, because although I still have to hang the mirror on in the frame, that's really outside of this topic. And so I appreciate your time, but I don't really want to spend any more of my time on the subject. See you later.